I'd like to play with the idea of being provocative a bit, sincere and at the same time uh, descriptive of like what I want. Meaning that um, you, you want attention, but how do you ask for attention? You sometimes have to do a, a, a soft approach to look at me, I'm here. Uh, and so understated, I think, is about uh, what I've been doing in the, in the long haul of my career has been understated in many cases. Uh, but that can go for everyone. You know, but I'm trying to make a strategy. The strategy is to bring attention to what is obvious. And what's obvious is that we all want to make money on our lives and our work. Right? And we all want people with a lot of money to take note of what we do. So we can get paid and we can pay our bills. So understated is like, you know, what, so how I feel about my work. I feel it's understated. It's quiet, it's there, it's not a kind of pop cultural entertainment. But like a lot of people who are quiet in what they do, they have merit and they have value, and they, they sincerely do it without money in many cases. So it's, a, it's sort of like a, yeah, I'm understated. It's quiet, it's there. Uh, it's minimal, meaning that it's not a grand amount of money to make it to, to make it a major sort of like statement. Um, it's it's a statement in the pieces that you make. They're 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 actually they're, they're speaking on something that's uh, that's become like a uh, a political thing because yeah, of yeah. what you're using. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's political because it's human. You know, I mean, the bicycle, for example, everyone probably could probably get into the idea that when you, you had your first bicycle, mm -hmm. it was the most emancipated feeling you ever had. You know, you had your bike, you were free from your mom, your dad, whoever it was you were living with, and you had the road, and you had freedom, and you had freedom of choice, but you could be more, right. The bicycle was my first feeling of being emancipated mm -hmm. from my, my uh, mother father and my sisters. And then I, I, I stayed with the bicycle, right. you know, to get away from my mom and dad. Farther away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are Many miles away. away. <laughs> and so the bicycle was something that we, we used to fix bicycles, make bicycles, find junk bicycles. And I just forgot about it. It was just a liberating escape. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, you grow up, but you, you maintain good memories, I guess. Right. But in the use of materials, what, what, what brings you to, well, you're considered, or you have been considered a painter. Do you still yeah. consider yourself a painter? Uh, no, no, not anymore. But I like to say that because it, it helps me get into uh, places that uh, I would never get into. Uh, a strategy is to, to, when you apply for something, if you say you're a painter and they only want sculptors, you get in because when you, when you break buck the system, they recognize that. <laughs> okay. And it's a rather like, interesting way of getting ahead of the game. Uh, my mother is, when we went down to the museum in DC, my mom had to have a wheelchair, because right, she has a bad leg. So we got the wheelchair, it was a huge line, but because she had the wheelchair, we were all getting in first. <laughs> <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> like five of us in line. Right. My mom made light of it. She said, yeah, we got here late, we got here, we did first. I said, yeah, thanks, mom. Mm -hmm. But um, the, um, the system, you know, it's just like, uh, I, yeah, I think color. I like color. That's what I'm painting. Mm -hmm. But then I recognize a lot of the other artists who were making installations and making site specifics were getting a lot of juice because they were having freedom in material use. Mm -hmm. so, and I, ch I chose to do these things mm -hmm. where I would just become free from um, what's expected of me. What about when you talk about your use of colors? You, when when I looked at well, when we look at hello, how you when, when we check out smoothies, I mean you have something that's I think this 
Ultramarine Blue, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Ultramarine Blue, yeah. That, that's like one of your signature pieces, I think, in D.C., in the Smithsonian, or at the Smithsonian. Yeah. You have a very large piece that's similar to that, yeah. but it's done in the feathers. Yeah. What, what, what is that? What, is that just the color that you're, you're into, or is that like just, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that, that's like something random. Th that's a color that came out of AOL. Okay. America Online, All right. you know, years ago when you had to get that bar that was right, right, right. load up and say right. you you were online. Right. I watched that bar a lot, mm -hmm. and I realized that it was a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. And then I got into uh, making these pieces. I did a piece at Thread Waxing Space where I used that color of rubber okay. uh, from the '90s, and then it just kept in my. Uh, closet because the color was a cheap color, a vibrant color, non-toxic, but gave a good presence. Mm -hmm. And the the idea of using the blue was that it was about uh, dichotomy, it had seduction, mm -hmm. and um, but also it stood for other things like blue films. It stood for good and evil, or or it had that connotation. Uh, blue movies, mm -hmm. pornography, mm -hmm. uh, the blues, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a type of an, uh, sentiment. But also, uh, blue is trustworthy. You know, cops wear blue, supposedly, in blue suits. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Should be, uh, but should be blue. Yeah. Uh, blue eyes, you know, blue moon. There's certain things mm -hmm. that blue comes up with. Uh, some, some religions like the, the, the color of it as well. Mm -hmm. I, I just did it because it made me feel good, you know. And I looked into the history of blue afterwards, but it made me feel good at first. Mm -hmm. Well, who who were the who were some of the people that have inspired you to go away from uh, painting mm. per se into you know well, some of the these people. pieces that have uh, uh, um, Carl Hazelwood was one over in Newark. Carl Hazelwood was great. Uh, I liked uh, looking at, uh, who else was there? Musa Hickson, some of his mm -hmm. stuff. Then there was um, people I don't know. Let's see, like uh, Anish Kapoor. But I try to go with people I know, because that's mm -hmm. who I call when I talk to, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, Al had three-dimensional stuff. Mm -hmm. Then there was uh, Chikaya Booker, who had some rubber pieces. Mm -hmm. And... Um, a bunch of, bunch of people, you know, that were doing stuff. Gerald Jackson, who was uh, living around the corner from me, Richard Van Buren, mm -hmm. in the Bowery. People who were sculptors and mixed media people. Mm -hmm. Mixing, playing with plastics and non-traditional material. Mm -hmm. In, in the, the pieces that you're doing, mm -hmm. the, the environments that you work in. Mm -hmm. So you, you have a studio in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, and I believe it's a very large one. Yeah. So you're able to actually mount like huge pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how does that affect your art? Does that like do you would it matter if you were in a smaller space or No, it wouldn't matter because you got ideas. Ideas it's, it's all about ideas. But when you can implement the idea, it helps you to kind of move into uh, the three dimensional mm -hmm. realm of it, to walk okay. in, walk out, get away from it, walk into it. Um, the space is it's good, you know. I wouldn't, wouldn't sit, put the space down. You still got to activate the space. Mm -hmm. But this is an intimate space here. Right. And I wanted something intimate in this space, mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring bring it in that we could interact with it, where it also imposed itself and gave in. Mm -hmm. It gives itself, mm -hmm. much like we are as a crowd. You know, I believe in society and the individual. The individual being important, but right. societal, we are together, we're collective, we make humanity. Right. So this is, this is kind of like society and the individual, where we make additions to it, mm -hmm. we gather in a space and hang. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, this, I like this space too, you know, I mean, I, I couldn't do this. In, this, this piece is going to be a memory, mm -hmm. and will be a, an idea that will go into another idea. So this is a very important space. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. the, what, what's next? What type of pieces are you working on? What's what next? Are you working towards? What's next is to have big ideas. Big, big, big ideas. Because when you talk to someone who's rich, 
You can't say you, you don't know what you want to do. You, you got you to you you pitch yeah, something to you. them. And they get like excited that you have at least that much done in, in terms of research. And they look at you and go, well, listen, maybe we can work on something. You go, okay, there we go. So, um, <laughs> so I got big ideas. Um, again, we were talking about this as rubber, then maybe with the steel loops without the rubber or the framing of them. Uh, then there's um, using household building material like roofing rubber rolls, pouring down, laying out, uh, uh, taking uh, the space that's interior and exterior, playing with interior and exterior space ideas. Um, so I, got, I, 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 I want to play with um, finding the money and then, then seeing how money can improve what I want. Uh, the, the other thing is, um, I have a book of ideas. I write them down mm -hmm. in this book. When I see it here, see something or feel something, I write it down in case I forget. Then I can go back into this recipe book of things I want to do. Mm -hmm. I put, that you can actually pull out, right? If I could, if I could only afford it, <laughs> right, right? Because the day to day shit is like, well, hey man, you know, um, you you may want to like turn a car upside down and cover it in mud, but right. you know, gonna do that. the rent man's calling. <laughs> <Right. but laughs> I can't I'll, do that. I'll right. go the ideas. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like, oh. And I'm trying to figure out how to pay the rent man. Right. 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 He's sucking all my juice, and I'm like, yo, man, I got it. Okay, you know, here's your money. You know, what was I thinking? Right, right, right. <laughs> So I think you can do that. But so you're you're looking to I know that you've done like large outdoor pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. one of them in uh, oh, Vienna. Yeah, in Switzerland, in um Verbier, Switzerland. Yeah. So Swiss um ski rich Russian folks go there to go ski and spend money and stuff. And what was the what was the response to a piece like that, to, to something? That was a badass piece, man. I mean, those people had money. Right. We were given a budget that didn't have an end to the budget. And I, 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 we rolled in there, and the ladies, the guys said to me, said, man, you the big, you, you, you in the big shots here. I said, yo, but I can feel like that now, but when I go back home, I'm not. So, <laughs> so, so let me just not get inflated. Let me stay, let me stay level. And then I, stay, I can leave and feel good, not go home and feel bad. So I did a piece that was with, you know, this rubber and this PVC right. and this bird, this, this cuckoo clocks from China. Right. Anything we wanted, man, they got it. So I did a piece, did two, two or three pieces. I even made, I even had them make a shark's cage <laughs> that I never used. I said, I need a shark's cage. I got, I got, I got, I didn't get crazy. I said, I need a shark's cage for this piece. They go, you got it. How much was the dimensions? They started fucking welding it. And before I knew it, sure. I had forgotten about it. And they delivered the shark's cage. <laughs> like, what's this? It's like in stainless steel. It's a shark's cage. You asked for it. I'm like, oh, I don't know. What did you do with the nothing? I left it. So we went to the dump. We had, they had a dump that was like a dump that was like a gold mine. Me and this other guy, Zach Ove, who's in, showing in London in the Vigo Gallery, we went, we went to this dump and the dump was filled with stuff that was like, in this country would be like, not in a dump. It wouldn't be in a dump. It would be in, the, be in my house. It would be in our <laughs> house. Right? And copper and everywhere. It was like, fantastic. So, um, yeah, did that. Those people were great. The piece was about what was not there. The, the, the premise was to have sculpture that would be, temporary sculpture that would be un, in, invasive to the, to the resort when it got to be ski time. So they had to be short time sculptural site specific. And I, I got there, we looked at the situation, the landscape, the climate. It was going to snow when we were gone. I made a piece that was blue mm -hmm. to be visible in the snow. I noticed that there were a lot of satch grass that was on the ground that would not be there when it snowed and mm -hmm. when it was freezing. So I made this piece to resemble the grass mm -hmm. and it was sticking out in under the grass in the snow and it would just accept the season and the changes. Mm -hmm. It was about four meters high with a meter down on the ground and so on. So it was, it, was big, it was a big undertaking to get it in and up. But it was about what's not there, you know, and the piece was called Fences. Mm -hmm. And AK fences because there were no fences on this land. So there was fences that you could walk through. It was a play on the idea of borders. Mm -hmm. And so. The idea of borders? 
the play on borders. It was just, there were no fences. Oh, and, you know, so these were fences that were open fences. They were, they were not restricted. They were just visual. Because mm -hmm. they, they went out like that. You could walk through them. So yeah, it was a nice. It was nice to have that kind of support where you could do what you want. And then I did the bird. I did a bird piece. I took uh, 24 bird cuckoo clocks and put them in the forest. They had them sink so that the cuckoo would come on. And cuckoo, as you know, represents good luck. If you have money in your pocket and you're walking someplace and it's spring and you hear a cuckoo, that means you you will have good fortune. Mm -hmm. So I was generating fortune. By having people walk in this forest and hearing these artificial cuckoo clocks, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's for the Swiss, right? The Swiss love. Them. They think they got money. They're not here, right? So it was like, oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. cuckoo, cuckoo all the time. Yeah. Like, oh shit, that, move this from right. somewhere else, right? Please come over here. Yeah. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Cuckoos, but but. That was good, right? That's yeah, that was good. good. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was, I was, you know, as they say, I was, you know, doing my thing. Yeah. So, how? Okay, we're getting, we're in this place now. Mm. Where we're here. dealing with. <laughs> please pull up. Where we we're dealing with um, an administration who's talking about cutting funding. Yeah. So, you know, many programs, arts being one of them. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? And does that, are you, do you even care? No, I don't care actually, to be honest. You know, we, I, I've lived in enough time. I mean, it's funny because I care, but I don't care. Because we always make do. Uh, I've had, I've never let, what, it out. I never let what administrations do to bother me because right. I don't get the money anyway from right. them. I mean, the liberals, I love them and I hate them. They don't give me <laughs> funds, right. you know? I mean, so we just do what we do. Right as we need to do it. And we support each other on the grassroots level. Right. I support people in Allentown. I give people money. I go to the shows. I give them a smile. I give them a, a you can do it. You know, I like your work. You know, that's cool shit, you know, and that helps people get through it. Right. Uh, I'm against people cutting budgets because right. we all need the money for the poor. I'd rather have poor people have money to spend it. Right. You know, I'm poor too. And I, I live amongst people who are working people who need money for many things. Mm -hmm. right. And I do not support cutting funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, with so many people, I mean, if you look, look around, mm -hmm. that, my, my question comes mm -hmm. because so many people are, they're hell bent on like the, the arts part of it. Yeah. And, and like you, I'm thinking, but we've had hard times for always so hard long, times, so what's yeah. the difference? I mean, yeah. I get it. Maybe yeah. the, the, there's not going to be grant money someplace, but that's where my question is. I had two young men in my neighborhood a couple of days ago. I was sitting there drinking bourbon with Ricky, <laughs> and, the, and the guy, they were outside, they parked the car, and they hey, Greg, you know, and my house is kind of lit up like this, and they can see inside, and they asked about what, one guy asked what I did, and one gentleman, teenager, he knew what I did. Right. So I said, yo, come on, man, come on inside. So I gave the, young, the new young man a tour mm -hmm. uh, of the house, which I don't do anymore. I gave him a tour, showed him the art, and the, pe the pieces, and I gave him a catalog. Took time out with my drunkenness to give them the time to say, yeah, you know, this is what I do. And yeah, they gave him a lot of, you know, moral support, the two of them, to be taken serious. I learned that I asked what he did. He was starting to be a nurse, you know. Um, so we're extroverts, mm -hmm. artists. And the people in our neighborhoods, we reach out and they come in. Whereas most families are introvert. If I can't go to his mom's house and get into it. Right. Right. I learned that when I grew up. You know, when you were up, you didn't go to some people's houses. No. The mothers were like, you, you stay outside and play. Right. But as an extrovert, I'm sure as, as Coleman knows here, George Coleman, he's a musician. He's probably playing his music and people hear that and he might... People knock on my door and think it's a club. Yeah, <laughs> right. Come on in and you know yeah. learn what you do. So uh, I, 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 we give in that capacity time. Right. As an artist, the, yeah. your, your, your focus, which your, that's your, your feeling, or yeah. what is your feeling mm -hmm. as an artist to the outer community? To oh, you know, I'm, I'm a freak. You know, they look, they call me. They, they said we're the people, the weirdos who live in the, in the, in the, in the factory. Right. But they don't use weirdos. You know? right. They're, straight, they're right. strange, nice people with the dog. Right? <laughs> right. 
I know you're coming out to walk the dog. You'll be out any minute now. You know. and, and the best thing about it is that the, some religious groups don't come to my door because they don't know if it's a house or a business. And I do talk to all religious groups. But there's some of them just look at me and go, uh, we can't go there. Okay. It's mine. But, you know, I'm not against you. I just, but it's Sunday, don't bother me. I'm having coffee. Right? But, you know. but I, the... Um, you know, we did a thing on Allentown. We, we did a, a, a thing called Fuse Art Infrastructure. We, we brought it to that area what we knew, what we did here in New York when we lived here, mm -hmm. to, to bridge the divide between the academics that were in the universities in that area that weren't talking to the laymen inside the cities mm -hmm. and the other townships that weren't talking to each other because there was a kind of uh, a hierarchy. Right. You know, Allentown is considered the, 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 the bad stepchild compared to the other two municipalities. Right. And so there's a lot of stigma that we had to overcome, and we did it, we brought people together. How, how does, um, are you doing, are you doing things now, presently, in, in Allentown? No, I, bro, I, no, no, they, they kicked my ass, man. Because, you know, my thought, when, when I saw, I had a thought, mm -hmm that you probably need to have some of the young artists come and visit you in Allentown. I had 30 Japanese from Osaka visit me, man. <laughs> did you? Which <laughs> How did that go? I had for three days, I had 30, and, we, we, and then Kiki got one of the girls in the Guggenheim yeah. during the Gutai exhibition, because their mentor was this guy who was uh, uh, Shozo Shibamoto, he was one of the Gutai mm -hmm. co-founders, and they had a big Gutai exhibition in the Guggenheim. So, they were like, is it possible? And she said, she got on the phone, she made things happen, and that girl got to do a nighttime presentation of her art mm -hmm. as part of the at night Guggenheim thing mm -hmm. where they drink and everything at night. Right. Fantastic. So we, we, when, we, when we have to, we bust it out. But the, the only thing was that we couldn't get the funding from the um, other, the rich people who live in the, the area. So we, we started to dry up in terms of our resources. And then we got kind of like, well, let's just fold it in and, and deal with what I got to do a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. where, where is your next exhibition? Where, where yeah. oh, 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 oh. oh, where would you like to exit? Oh, I, I, I'd like to go to Hamburg or Bahnhof and, you know, in Berlin. I'd like to do uh, Mass Mocha. I'd like to do... Uh, Let's see. Uh, and what type of work would you bring to them? Man, something like Wicked. Um, I don't know yet. Strings. I got, I got a couple of things I would not mind doing. Um, let's see. The National Museum is a nice place to have a show. Big space. You know? Um, but you know, I'm kind of like at this point where I don't know if I want money to be the overall reason for exhibitions. I, I walk into exhibitions and, I, and the first thing I see is money and I go, wow, that's just... I used to go into exhibitions and I would go, I'm just in awe. I'm inspired. But now I walk into places and I go, that's bank. Like <laughs> poor, poor Anish Kapoor. I look at Anish Kapoor thing and I go, that's bank. Who paid for that? I, just, I mean, who paid for that? Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm like impressed with the man who paid for it. And I'm like, I met him, I know the guy, he's a nice guy, I don't know him that well, but fuck, you know. It's not well enough. Well enough. But you know what I mean, you, you walk into something and you're like, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a measure of like, this is amazingly expensive. Oh, no, it's art, you know, rather than, oh, this is art and it's cool and you don't mind, you don't mind how, you know, how it got there. So I, I've got, I'm on a crusade where I think you can make things wonderful without it being about the money. So I have to be in New Orleans in November. And I think, I was thinking on the way over here, maybe having a room like this with blue lights and just having a party and people get together and dancing. Because the idea is just to get up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we should do this stuff like this all the time. And we would just be like dancing. Because this is about like making each other interactive rather than like, you know, like, you know, having this money be the thing. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to get into liberating Recognition, right. reflection, right. each other. Right. You know, uh, I don't want to do it all. I want, I, want, I want you to make as much money as I make, so we can spend. So we can be comfortable. If, right? Yeah, we can all spend our cash. <laughs> that's important. You know, if we're all making money, we're all spending it, and we can 
can bring you a gift. You can bring me one. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, I think it's important that we understand that there's got to be a different paradigm. You know, uh, making. I'm not high maintenance. You know, uh, forgive me, man. Mm. Um, and I, I like verb and sass and and, and, and invention. So I got to go to. Um, I just got a job at Vermont to teach to do artists and residency talk for five days. They paid a nice bank and they let me bring Kiki and the dog. I'm like, yo, man, this is great. You know, we're going to make money on this. Thing. Everyone knows who Kiki is, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing is, you know, um, I'm just happy to uh, um, be here right now. I can't think of anywhere else. That's it. Yeah. Do we have questions from the audience? I have a question. I want to um, congratulate you on the uh, Joe Mitchell. I want everybody to know that the Joe Mitchell is uh, an organization in New Orleans that um, uh, you have to be a recipient of the past one of the Joe Mitchells in order to even get a residency. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Thank you. And I say that because. Uh, every day I get up, and every day I think, okay, how am I going to make this work every day? You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot, a lot of you do, like, you know, as artists, mm -hmm. as people who have, who have, you know, the belief in what you do as artists. Um, and I guess Oprah does the same too, you know. <laughs> so relative, I guess. <laughs> if I'm thinking, how am I going to make this work? But uh, I know that we need to have recognition you know, on each other on the small things, because the small things add up. And then when we go through life, we can look back and share the little moments that added up to our, our many moments, you know? So thank you. Well, you know, we've been brothers for a while. Yeah, that's true. And uh, um, I've talked with the people at Joe Mitchell, so you mm -hmm. know, I know um, Gia and the yeah. crew, et cetera. Yeah. So I find it fascinating, and uh, I'm very happy for you. Yeah. What, what seems to be your approach to the Joe Mitchell? I mean, what, have you figured out what you wanted to do? Or no, they keep asking me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to the book. I got to book. <laughs> go to the book. Yeah, because you know, the interesting thing is how when people, I, I, I don't get these things a lot of times. They, they have these very clever people who have these clever questionnaires. They say, what would you do when you come here? Like, I don't know, man. I got to get there. I got to be in, mixed with the people. I got to see what they don't have, what I can bring. I got to be able to see how I can, can, can involve myself with you equally or, you know, I'm not, not, it's not an opposition takeover, it's not an invasion, you know, and so how do we know until I get there? But I do know that I, I want to make use of mops, you know, like recognizable material, um, shopping, you know, like just whatever I can find, and I've been thinking about it a lot. And then it excludes itself. There's sponges, mops, anything I can get at hardware stores. You know, the interesting is that they give you twenty dollars a day as your as your um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Tax? <laughs> Taxi fare? <laughs> twenty bucks a day? It's like three years. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I love the taxi. It's like no taxis, taxis, yeah. taxis, yeah. like yeah. taxis yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's three get us done. <laughs> So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like, thank you, Joe Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, we're doing good. We're good. Now, now that's, what I, that's what I spend every day, 20 bucks. Might have to edit that out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So uh, what, what, do you, um, what do you tell uh, young artists in terms of, you know, how to, how to approach this, this world of art? From a creative standpoint, but also, you know, as, as a business, you know, so that you can continue to create. Yeah. The, uh, I say the first thing is how um, we all know that your overhead and your intake your, and your output, for example, I, when I teach young people or, or in, give information, I see young people spending a lot of money bringing materials so that they can maybe make something so they can then sell it. And uh, after a while, it's terrible that they spend more money then they, they retrieve. So you gotta figure out how to make money uh, by lowering your overhead. So in my case, I, I say 
try to make use of what's around you. Uh, use your intellect versus the buying of the material that is expensive. Question the material, find the truth in the material, and then use your intellect and audacity to create something that people will genuinely find interesting. Um, in many cases, failure and success. Look for failure. Look to fail. Achieve failure because once you get past the fear of failure, there's nothing that can't happen. And I, I say all these things because I've lived these things. I used to have a white canvas. I can't touch it. I can't do it right. I'm afraid. I'm paralyzed. But then I got into using found materials and I had no fear of the material. I had no fear of making a mistake. I found discovery. I found myself free. I found myself making money. And I say, this, that, that's something to consider. So risk, failure, research is important. Uh, look what's behind you. Bicycle tires covered in feather. Sounds delicious, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I say to young artists, um, and I say, try to figure out their, their generation. Because when I was older or younger, I was... You know, I, I, they're young, and so they have a different energy level. And I say, do what is your energy level? What, is, what are you after? How do you, what, how do you want to define yourself? One of the big things I say now is, does your art speak for you, and will it speak for you in your absence? You know, and we all deal with the death of loved ones mm -hmm. and, and artists who are no longer here. So I got into understanding that if, if, you're, if your artwork is not speaking on your behalf in your absence, make it. Because one day you'll be dead, like I will, but I hope my work speaks clearly on my behalf. So if that's, that's something that has to be you know, driven to understood. Don't wait. And that's, I, tell them, I say things like that, sort of somehow my life experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a question. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you kind of answered it before when you were talking about liberation and breaking uh, paradigms. Mm -hmm. When I first walked in and I saw the installation, I'm like, man, that's, your work has such a great like, tactile quality, and you, know, you always want to just touch it. Right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to run through it until I found out, man, it's interactive, that's really cool. Like, mm -hmm. So how... Is that something that you, is it site specific or is that something that you include in all your installations? Or? Well, I'm, I'm not a professional. I've just been doing it for a long time. Hmm. And, um, yeah, I, man, I, do I, it. I, I must, I must. He, did it already. he, he is a professional. <laughs> 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 I thought the whole point was. When to this was put up, uh, it was put up like. <laughs> there was, a, I'll show you the pictures later. It was done professional. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, get into it. <laughs> right. How many? How many people in your family? My immediate family, five. Yeah, there you go. If you come to my house and wash in Lyman Place, my mother. We grew up in a house this size, two floors, six sisters and one brother, your mom and dad, tight, one bathroom, one basement, intimate man, you know all the way. So. Um, it's about that, you know, you're going to run into people, you're going to you know, move around, and it's about that kind of thing, where, uh, take liberty, if you, run in, if you walk through this thing and we get mad at you, we'll let you know. <laughs> but until that time, you're okay, right? So, uh, I'm interested in um, um, the humanity that we have as the, the variation of people we are. You know, there's one p group that says, this is how you operate, but they, don't, they didn't say that, they just show that and we, we follow suit, you know? So let's just try to follow, let's make our own traditions possibly part of the conversation. Yeah. I have a question. Hmm? How do you choose the materials? Do you, do you have like a visceral connection to, to objects? Or, you know? Well, I'll tell you, um, as, as an opportunist, right? I had uh, a friend of mine, Andre Morton, who was a bike messenger in, in, in New York City. And I had spent some time in South Africa where I found material to be extremely 
uh, important for people who are very, very poor as in terms of source material. So I came back and I was visiting Andre down on Canal Street in his bike shop and he had all this rubber sitting around and I thought, if it's sitting around, it's got to be free. <laughs> it's trash. <laughs> so I figured if I could just get anything that was free, I would then figure out a way to deal with it, you know, and to radicalize it, to make it suit my needs. So I just wait till something happens that I can capitalize on. I would like to be different than that. Like if I could get aircraft parts, let's say, but I guess my story is part of what I use. So the story is I, I come into contact with the bike and the rubber. The feathers come from Target, their, their pillow, their sanitized goose feathers. Not the original piece, not the original feather. Yes, those are goose feathers too. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically everything came through a kind of serendipity, you know, it was an accident that, that I figured, hey, what the hell can I do with this? So I, I took advantage of just what was in front of me, you know? And I, I, I look at, I don't have a recipe, I'm, I'm organic that way. Like even now I was trying to figure out, do I have something to say that's clearly concise? No, it's, it's about like how it feels next to Aaron and how, you know, you look at me and how he, she looks at me and how he looks at me. And then how George comes in and breaks up the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go through the like, thought process. So, yeah, so. Um, it's an opportunity, you know, that I can try to measure up using what might be. Are you an artist as well? I am. Yeah. Using what might be uh, your logic on uh, source material and, and dealing with um, line, shape, form, color. I'm con I, I have like a visceral connection to objects. Mm -hmm. I can start collecting them, I don't know why, until I have a bunch and then, you know, something comes out of that. Yeah, and, and I told a friend of mine once, and I, and, I, and I had to listen to my own advice, your art is not being made, you live in your art. You know, I mean, I, she was, this girl was, she was like, oh yeah, you go to her house, she's like, wow, your fucking house is great. And she was, oh, I don't have any money, I don't have any money, I don't have any money. But I said, look, Kim, your house is the fucking art, your house is the art. Oh no, I don't have any money, I don't have any money. Okay, forget it, I'm taking that advice to heart. I can't go and wait to buy art supplies to make art. My life is here and I am, maybe I collect this shit because that's what it's about. And so therefore that's the art. So, food for thought is this. If you don't give me what you got, how will I ever learn? All right, like George is a jazz guy. If he ain't kicking it, how will I ever learn what he's thinking? So we all have to do one thing. We have to give what we got so we can learn and we can, and then it's food for thought and we can get better. So that's why I, give you some permission, brother. Kick it out there. Yeah, Feed from, me. From the music standpoint, I, I used to always be very, at a point in my career where I was like, I'm not going to do that gig because it doesn't pay enough money. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that one of my heroes did every gig. And when I asked him, I said, well, why? I said, you don't have to do that gig. He said, man, either you're appearing or you're disappearing. Mm. And so, you know, now I'm like, it's more important to just be out there doing your thing and continually getting better. Because if you're sitting home saying, well, you know, I didn't think that gig doesn't pay enough money. But you're sitting home, you're not doing your art, then, you know, what are you doing? You're not getting better. Yeah, you're smoking, right? Because <laughs> I... This is my good friend George Coleman uh, Jr., a jazz drum. His dad's mom, I've known, they're important jazz people, so is he. And, and George had, we had this talk years ago uh, where he talked, he said, I'm going to do this. And he set on that track, that path, to document his family, to kick out 12 albums per so and so. And he started doing it. And I haven't seen him since. <laughs> uh, only on Instagram. And he was in Cuba. I just see him through another one. I just see him through, I just see him through Instagram where he's like doing what he had pointed out to do mm -hmm. so many years ago and mm -hmm. he's been executing those ideas. Some people are very focused. And George, George, <laughs> he made that he made that commitment. And um, there are people who we come into contact with who you never get to say, You meant something to me. You you touched me, you gave me what took me over to make it possible. And sometimes you have those people you can say thank you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we don't say thank you because we don't know them anymore. 
that's why I'm here, man, because mm -hmm. because when we had that talk, mm -hmm. you know, many years ago, mm -hmm. and and I was just like, you know, you were you were really positive about like what you were doing. I'm like, man, if he's if he's out here kicking it, you know, what's my excuse? Mm -hmm. And so that's why you haven't seen me. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been supporting you though. I, I give you the likes. <laughs> I give you the hearts. I give you the hearts. And stuff. <laughs> you always support me. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So you know. You to do the same. Thing. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Yeah. So all these are good questions because it's about us. Not just about me. It's about us. How we reflect off each other. Like how we learn. You're doing this for you, but for the community, and for the bringing of people together, and I thank you for that too. Oh, thank you. Yeah.